Members, the next amendment is on page 199. The following amendment, the clerk will read the amendment. Amendment by Herrero. Chair recognizes Mr. Herrero to explain the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, you may have heard of this amendment. Uh, simple amendment. Uh, all we are doing is restating what is already in the Constitution, and that is the funds appropriated for our public schools will remain as such. So if you look at the amendment, uh, it says that this, this amendment prohibits the use of appropriated money for school vouchers or other similar programs, meaning the monies appropriated by the state will be for our public primary and public secondary education. And just so that you know, under the education code as it exists now, an open enrollment charter school is part of the public school system of this state. Move for adoption. The chair recognizes Dr. Buckley to speak in opposition to the amendment. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, members, first of all, I have tremendous respect for Representative Herrero and, and his passion about this issue, and as many as uh, many of you on this floor. Um, I don't think there's anyone in this body that um, does not love our public schools. It's been my family's life. It's what we've done. It's where my kids have gone to school. But I have tremendous faith in this body at a time when our, our kids have suffered through a pandemic, um, when we've seen learning loss, we've seen families torn apart by disease, and we've seen families torn apart by economic disruption, and our kids are behind. And I can tell you on Tuesday, there will be uh, six pieces of legislation laid out before the Public Education Committee that will simply offer up a, a list of ideas of ways that we could uh, potentially, if this body agreed to it, move our kids forward and provide resources for our schools while honoring the, 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 the fact that we all know that parents are in control of their, chil their children's education. And I feel like the, this process with this amendment turns things really in the wrong direction. It is the proverbial cart before the horse. Uh, so with that, I will respectfully oppose um, and speak against this amendment. And uh, uh, I would also like to move to table this amendment so that we can begin to have a discussion in the process that the Texas House is known for to be thoughtful about it and come up with good policy. So I move to table the amendment. The chair recognizes Mr. Herrera to close on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, so if you support your neighborhood schools, if you support your public school teachers, whether they work at a public education school or a public charter school, we want to make sure that we vote against the motion to table. So for the new members, they're asking not to vote on the subject matter. This is a procedural vote. They're asking you to vote. Uh, to table, so I'm asking you to vote no on the motion to table so that we can actually get on the subject matter before us, and that is to, ins to ensure that our public funds are used for our public schools. And so for that, I ask that you oppose the motion to table uh, and so that we can actually vote on the subject matter before us. Mr. Martinez-Fisher, for what purpose? Mr. Speaker, parliamentary inquiry. Please take your inquiry. Mr. Speaker, I believe this may be the first motion to table vote that I'm aware of. just want to make sure the body knows how to vote I will before explain the bell is wrong. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. I move to oppose the table. Mr. Herrera, since of an amendment, Dr. Buckley has moved to table. The question is on the motion to table. If you support Mr. Herrera's amendment, vote no on the motion to table. If you, do, if you oppose Mr. Herrera's amendment, vote yes on the motion to table. This is a division vote. The clerk will ring the bell. A record vote has been requested by Mr. Herrera. A record vote has been granted. The clerk will ring the bell. So Mr. Goldman voting aye. Mr. Herrera voting nay. Mr. All members voted. 
There being 64 ayes and 71 nays, the motion to the table fails. Any member wish to speak for, on, or against the amendment? Any member would speak for, against, or on the amendment. The chair recognizes Mr. Harrison to speak in opposition to the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, there may be no um, greater issue that we grapple with as a body this legislative session than how we educate uh, the next generation of Texans. This amendment should be opposed both on policy grounds and on procedural grounds. An overwhelming majority of Texans and Texas parents support education freedom. We, we are blessed, and I would be the first to say to have tremendous public schools in the state of Texas. I stand here before you as a very proud public school parent. But not every Texan has that opportunity. We've got to oppose this amendment on policy and also on the procedural grounds. As Chairman Buckley laid out, we have numerous bills that have been filed this session, and we as a deliberative body owe it to our constituents to have a chance to deliberate the questions of education freedom. I rise in strong opposition to this amendment. Thank you. The chair recognizes Mr. Schlatschlein to speak in opposition to the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Look, something that I often hear from members on the other side of this issue is that we should listen to the wishes of our constituents when determining our position on legislation. One of the most important demographics to me and the demographic that should be important to all of you is the parents of, my, of our districts. Our Texas parents are struggling under the weight of high property taxes, rapid inflation. They've suffered with balancing the COVID pandemic and the effects that had on our children's education. And I know that the taxpayer-funded lobbyists, special interest groups have become very active in the last few days, flooding our offices with calls, pressuring us to oppose school choice, trying to drown out the voice of parents across the state. And I would like to share with y'all some statistics about Texas parents that should make clear the position of our constituents to us. And according to UT Tyler poll conducted in March of this year showed that 60% of Texas voters support education freedom. The UT, uh, University of Texas at Austin conducted a similar study also showing a plurality of Texas voters support such measures. And then this UT Austin study also helped debunk the fallacy that rural voters strongly oppose education freedom as the polls concluded there was actually not a rural divide on the issue of school choice in the state of Texas. And finally, most importantly, the research shows that 74% of parents with school age children want control over their children's education dollars. I, I ask you members, please, vote no on this amendment. The reality is, is that I believe that we have never seen any type of competition harm an industry. Our public schools are no different. And this has got to be something that we get to discuss and work towards as a body. I believe that parents should be empowered in the state of Texas. Please vote no on the amendment. The chair recognizes Mr. Frank to speak in opposition to the amendment. Members, I hope you appreciate I don't come up here much. I'd ask if I could just get three minutes of your attention for a second. You can be for all parents and all kids in your district. Public schools are great. I look forward to voting later for a big increase in funding to public schools. The vast majority of kids in Texas will always go to public schools, and I want them to thrive. The future of our state depends on it. But no matter how good the school is in your district, no matter how good, some of y'all, somebody in here has the best school district in the state, no matter how good those schools are, 
Every child has different needs and parents should have available options. No school can be all things to all people, no matter how good your school district is. We can do multiple things at once. We can be pro-public school, pro-charter school, and even possibly consider being pro-ESAs if we want to meet the needs of every parent and every child in this state, and I really think everybody in here wants to. I have talked to a lot of you over the last month as we have been working on this, and it has been very respectful, at least the discussions that I've had with members. But you know what? Virtually every member that I've talked to that is against this has also told me about at least one exception in their family, a child, a grandchild, a friend, that for whatever reason, public school wasn't perfect for them for their entire career. The difference is, members, every one of us, every one of us is for choice when it comes to your own children and your own grandchildren. The difference is that members in this room Members in this room have the resources and the connections to make the choices that many of your constituents don't have. The bills that I hope that at some point we can at least discuss on the floor, focus on providing some of the same options that you and I have for kids and parents in this state. I ask you to be for every parent, every child in this state and give your constituents the same choices that you and I have ask you to vote against this amendment. The chair recognizes Mr. Herrera to close on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, please stick with our public schools and our... The chair recognizes Dr. Buckley to speak in opposition to the amendment. Mr. Speaker, members, Hope I didn't cause any confusion on the motion to table. But what we stand here today is, 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 is not in a situation to be in for or against your public schools. Uh, it, it's about the process that we have in the Texas House. It's about the process of what we're doing today, a constitutionally required effort um, to pass a budget. But then that is the framework. The, uh, the flesh has to be put on these bones. And that what happens that's what happens in our committees. And I am absolutely certain that the Texas House Committee on Public Education will have a thoughtful discussion on Tuesday with several hundred Texans coming to the Texas Capitol to make their opinion known. And then as we always do, we'll get together, R's and D's, those that are before it, before it and against it and kind of in the middle and come up with, with, with a, a, some sort of policy that may or may not leave the committee. But I do believe that we, we should respect the process and make sure that we have the discussions in the proper order so that we can have good policy that leaves this, uh, that leaves this body. And um, so that's why I'm opposing the amendment today. Mr. Harris, for what purpose? Yeah. Mr. Speaker, would the gentleman yield for a question? The gentleman yield for questions. I will. The gentleman yields. Chairman Buckley, is it your position that the debate that we're trying to have over this amendment in this policy area, mm -hmm. given the fact that we have several bills that will be heard in your committee and the Pub Ed Committee next week, mm -hmm. the budget is not the appropriate place to have this debate. Is that your mm -hmm. position? Yeah, abs absolutely. Uh, I mean, we have to look at, at what ideas are brought before the, uh, before the committee. Uh, and, and then, as you know, many bills before a committee go through a process of of changing and amending and, and working it out amongst members, and that's the process. I mean, the way this, this, if this amendment is adopted, you could take a simple grant that special ed parents are now receiving to provide services or special, special items for their special needs kids, and basically this amendment says you can't do it. We, we need to wrap policy around this budget. We've set the framework, and I just ask that you oppose this amendment and, 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 and help the Public Education Committee and help your colleagues wrap policy around the budget and, uh, and, and let us go through the process to see what, uh, what policy may, may come forth from the Public Education Committee in the Texas House. And then that's only one hurdle if that were to occur. This raucous body of folks that care about their, the kids back home, 
will again have the, uh, another opportunity to decide on the policy. So uh, that's, what I, that's what I ask is we simply let that process go forth. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Harris, for a purpose. I move to have the remarks between myself and Dr. Buckley placed in the journal. Members, you heard the motion and objection. Chair, here's an unsworn order. Mr. Smithy, for what purpose? Uh, will the gentleman yield, Mr. Speaker? Will the gentleman yield for questions? I will. Uh, Dr. Yields. Buckley, I think you and Mr. Harris just made a good point. Are, are your, is your meeting for next week on these bills, is it posted currently? Yes, sir. And it's so been posted since yesterday morning. And so the public will have notice of that hearing, right? Yes, sir. And people from all over the state will be able to come to that hearing and testify for or against the proposals that are before the committee. That's correct. And that's part of the democratic process, isn't it? Absolutely. And you know, the, the Texas House used to be, more so than now, a marketplace of ideas, most of which were bad, some of which were good, but we were never afraid to discuss those ideas. And so the, my concern is we're going to take a vote here today without public input on the issues that we're voting for. And this is not, is not just an ordinary issue. The proponents of school choice claim that it will be the greatest thing that will ever happen to school children in the state of Texas. The opponents say that it will destroy our education system. I suspect the result would be somewhere in the middle. But at least we shouldn't proceed with this, this important question, before we let the public have a say in what we're going to do. Do you agree with that? Yes, sir. I mean, we've argued amendments today that talk about shifting funding around that don't take into account good bills I know will be heard that will actually solve the problem these, these amendments we're, we're, we're trying to solve. And well, so I think the process should be where we lay the policy out before a committee of our peers and we provide input uh, from everybody in this, in this body and we hear from Texans about, uh, about the direction they, they want to go for their children. And I've always voted against uh, vouchers in the past when we've had these proposals and I, I may likely vote against them again this time, mm -hmm. but I would like to hear the input and the arguments before you and I cast that vote. Yes, sir, and that's why I ask people to oppose the amendment to let the conversation continue so that we can have um, the, the robust debate that we have in this, in, in, in this body, and um, that's where we're at okay, thank you. at this point. Thank you. Members, I just uh, encourage you uh, to be thoughtful about, about your vote. The bills are going to be heard on Tuesday and uh, starts at 8 o'clock. I'll be there. Tune in, and you'll see Texas, uh, you'll see, uh, Texas weighing in on this issue from, from, from across the state. Thank you. Does any member wish to speak for, against, or on the amendment? The chair recognizes Mr. Herrera to close on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, procedurally, just so you know, we're now on the amendment. So if you support our public schools, if you support our public school teachers, if you support our public charter schools, then you would support in, by voting yes for this amendment. There was a comment that was made, um, and let me say this, this wouldn't be the first time if this is adopted that this similar amendment has previously been adopted in previous sessions on the budget. And the debate has continued as we know. So it, the discussion about whether or not the debate will continue, I, I leave that for you to decide. Another comment that is made, another way of thinking about this amendment is these are public funds for public schools. As I mentioned to you, the Public Education Code specifically identifies under 12.105 that an open enrollment charter school is part of a public school system of this state, right? So that's a public school, public funds for public schools. Another uh, discussion, although not mentioned specifically, was a reference to the Supplemental Special Education Services Grant. And let me just say that this amendment does nothing to negatively affect that program because in order to be eligible for this program, it says students must currently be, and then one point is, enrolled in a Texas public school. And so these are public funds for public schools as is outlined and stated specifically in the Texas Constitution. And for that, members, please stick with our public school teachers, our neighborhood schools, and our public charter schools and vote yes for this amendment. The question occurs on the adoption of the amendment. This is a record vote. A record vote is requested by the Minister of Pursuit. A record vote has been granted. The clerk will ring the bell. So Mr. Wally voting aye. Mr. Herrera voting aye. Mr. King from Hempel voting aye.
of all members voted. There being 86 ayes and 52 nays, the members adopted.